Welcome to Digging with Deej. How's everybody doing? I'm melting. It's hot here. Let me see who's in my chat. First person in my chat was Mark Thomas. Then Ed. Hi, Ed. Flash in your pan. Welcome back. Finding goodies, too. Tracy, welcome back. Mark DeBerg Hunter, welcome back. I think I'm caught up. So, is everybody staying cool? Hi, Piper. Mark and Piper are on vacation. <laughs> totally stress-free. That's good, Mark. Glad to hear it. We all need days like that. All right. Hi, hi, Team Clambake. Welcome back. Yeah, it's warm. Real warm. And, you know, my upstairs is air conditioned, but it doesn't get downstairs at all. So it's pretty warm down here. Welcome back, Amethyst. How are you? So, it's a pretty crazy week last week. Um, Tanner Banana is doing better. I don't think I'm going to put her back on that dog food. There's something about that dog food that maybe they changed the recipe. I don't know. Hi, Brandon, Alabama Dirt Digger. Hi, Squirrels Magnet Fishing. Javier Garcia, welcome back. Um, because Tanner Banana was on 32 units of insulin for three months now. And since I switched her to the lamb and rice, she's on 22, or not lamb and rice, chicken and rice and broccoli. She's on 22 units of insulin and stable. So, when I talked to the vet, they told me, well, if you can stabilize her, there's really no need for a blood test. It, it could have been that they changed the recipe of the dog food. Because as long as she's not eating that dog food, she's not requiring 32 units. She's requiring 10 less units twice a day. So, we're keeping her on lime and rice. For the time being. Um when I get my next um, check, then I'll take her in for complete blood work just to make sure everything's okay. Yeah, a lot of people, I remember that, Mark. A lot of people lost cats. Thank God I wasn't using that brand at the time. But there was a recall on cat food because it was causing kidney failure in cats. So, Papa Roos, Bill, welcome. Got my cross on. Paul, American Woodland Marlicks, welcome back. I don't think I've missed anybody yet. Let's see, 10 in my chat. So, let's go over the um, treasure hunting community illness list um for those of you who may not know uh lincoln central coins went on facebook and asked for prayers because he has been diagnosed with cancer i don't know what kind so please give him support show him support when you see him in the live streams you know i'm sure he would appreciate that um, Uncle Al, oldies and goodies, is in rehabilitation still. Me, minor Greg, is rehabilitating at home um, from a tree falling on him. You guys met him in the chat two or three live streams ago. Jim Steele was in a car accident and going through rehabilitation right now and therapy. So... He is a great supporter of our treasure hunting community as well. 
Um, Hunter GT, I haven't heard anything new. I checked his channel last week and he's doing videos again. So I'm assuming, you know, he had, he had scheduled, they told him to schedule an appointment with his cardiologist. I don't know any more than that. Adventures with Goat, his wife is home from the hospital. So that's a good thing. Uper57 is recovering from cancer treatment. I haven't heard anything from him recently. Uh, misplaced Uper girl, Amy Smith. Uh, I'm sorry to say she went in to the hospital for stomach pain again and they discovered another tumor. So she is going through chemotherapy already. Um, let's see. Larry of Mobile Coins, the gentleman who in the coin community that lost his legs. Um, please send him prayers as well. He has a GoFundMe out there. Uh, Missouri Mike seems to be getting better every video. Tracy of Finding Goodies, please send him your prayers. He's in the chat. Um, while he's dealing with illness. Let's see. And metal detecting elastic in Alaska, Keithy Six. He seems to be doing better. Um, the last video I watched of his, he was kayaking with his grandson. And Thor's treasure seems to be doing better too. Um, he went gold panning in his homeland of Scotland. Susie Q96. Where's my phone? Was flown by helicopter from a town near her to a hospital in Roanoke, Virginia. She was put into the intensive care unit for a huge blood clot in her lung. Um, I think one of my last texts that I got from Susie's niece, who has been the one taking care of her, taking her to doctor appointments, things like that. Um, Wendy said that they were going to be sending her to the step-down unit, but I haven't heard any more since then from Wendy. Um, when I asked her about, there was an issue um, that I got really upset about. You know, I did a live stream on harassment and bullying, and so did uh, Digging Canuck Liz. And Liz pointed out the fact that some of us stronger channels need to stick up for the people who can't defend themselves. And a comment was made on her last video that was negative. She was in ICU, so she couldn't block the comment. She could only delete it. Because to block somebody, you have to do it on a computer. And they don't allow laptops in ICU. <laughs> I mean, for a couple of days there, I didn't hear anything from her. I'm wondering if they took her phone away from her. I'm not sure. Either that or sedated her. I don't know. But needless to say, I was upset about the fact that this person made a negative comment that why hasn't the GoFundMe been updated, okay? And I didn't name names when I made my comment and I made a very bold comment and I probably shouldn't have done that. So don't, so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes, okay? Um, I told, I said, whoever it is that's making these comments needs to stop. You know, the woman is in an ICU unit I mean, it's just wrong. Who does that? Who does that? I just, and instead of waiting till I calm down, I went in and made a bold comment that it needs to stop and that Susie's supporters and uh, subscribers, if they see harassment or bullying, that they needed to report it. Boy, did I open up a can of worms. It just made it worse. So since then, to try to stop the garbage, 
I deleted my comment. So just be aware that even when you stand up for somebody who can't fend for themselves because they're in a hospital bed, in an ICU unit, it can come back and affect you. Um, this person asked me a question and I wasn't willing to answer it because they used the word liar. They've called me a liar and Susie a liar and it's, I'm not playing that game. I know what facts I have in front of me and they don't match up. So first person in my life that's ever called me a liar. So this is what Susie's niece found out from GoFundMe. GoFundMe only updates when a new deposit is made. Okay. All of the fundraisers are set up that way. Then on a designated day of the month, the fees are taken out. Yep, there are fees and taxes are taken out and the remainder is sent to the person the funds were raised for. Okay. There wasn't an update since June 10th because there were no new donations to the GoFundMe site on June 10th. You cannot combine on GoFundMe, you can't combine. She has a fundraiser for Facebook. She has a fundraiser through PayPal. And I think one other one. You can't combine all those with GoFundMe. They don't allow that. Susie has been battling illness that nobody knew what was causing it since March. I have been in that position myself fighting cancer where you feel so helpless. It's scary. It's you're so yeah, I blew my stack and I made a very strong comment against whoever was doing this. And now they've made a nasty video about it. So I don't really care. Um, Susie's niece will be doing a video. She's, she's not going to get in front of the camera. She said she's going to lay pieces of paper down the documents and show the total that has been collected. What was deducted for fees and taxes and what's left to be raised. She still doesn't have enough, but she's getting close. So just from experience and I learned the hard way. I, I had an, every intention of doing good and I think I made it worse. So be careful what you say. Some people will come after you for it, for protecting somebody else for trying to protect someone else. So anyhow, enough of that. So our show today is about, I've got the wrong book now. Keep Susie in your prayers, please. The show today is about the history of fireworks. Oh, I don't need to prove anything to any, to her. I'm just telling you, you know, when somebody comes out and calls you a liar for protecting somebody else, that's not a good thing in my book. Hi, Indiana Tones. Hi, Southwest Florida Metal Detecting. But it's no big deal, okay? We've got it handled. Let's see. Who have I missed in the chat? Jimmy Cloak, welcome. can't remember if I sent them out or not, so I will send some to you this week. I'm not sure. Might be tough. Okay, he's talking to Southwest Florida treasure hunting or treasure detecting. Okay, so we're going to talk about the history of fireworks. So it is believed that the fireworks originated in the second century BC in ancient Lingwei, which is China. 
okay some think the first firecrackers were natural pieces of a bamboo that when burned the air pocket inside exploded <coughs> you know the bamboo piece with the air pocket would explode like a firecracker the chinese believe these would protect them from evil spirits the first man-made fireworks were show up in 600 to 900 a.d they were made by chinese using potassium nitrate charcoal and sulfur which is what uh, gunpowder is made out of and they would fill the bamboo with that uh, fireworks were seen in europe in the 13th century and used for religious celebrations in the 15th century the first fireworks manufactured in Europe were done so by the Italians. European aristocrats used them to entertain their people and celebrate important holidays at their castles. The immigrants coming to the New World brought the fireworks trade with them. And fireworks were displayed on the July holiday we now still celebrate. So that I've got saved on my phone. Let me find it. A newspaper article from the time of John Adams. Let me, let me find it. Let me read you this article. Okay. So, People say, why do we celebrate the 4th of July? Because John Adams wanted us to. Before the Declaration of Independence was even signed, he envisioned fireworks as a part of the fe festivities. In a letter to Abigail Adams on July 3rd, 1776, he wrote that the occasion should be commem commemorated with pomp and parade with shoes, games, shoes as in s-h-e-w-s games sports guns bells bonfires and illuminations from one end of this continent from this time forward to the other from this time forward forevermore the first commemorative independence day fireworks were set off on july 4th 1777 the year after our independence the Pennsylvania Evening Post wrote that in Philadelphia, the evening was closed with the ring of bells. And at night, there was a grand exhibition of fireworks, which be began and concluded with 13 rockets on the commons. And the city was beautifully illuminated. The paper noted that everything was conducted with the greatest order and decorum and the face of joy and gladness was universal that same year fireworks also lit up the sky in boston where they were exhibited by colonel thomas crafts over the common by 1783 a large variety of fireworks were available to the public in 1784 one merchant offered a, a range of pyrotechnics that included rockets serpents wheels table rockets, cherry trees, fountains, and sunflowers. So, isn't that cool? <laughs> they even had them snake serpent things back then. <laughs> so, let's see. Many large cities use fireworks to help the local economy by bringing spectators from miles around to spend money in their cities during their holiday stay. For instance, Louisville, Kentucky, their fireworks generated $56 million, I think, in 2019. So which state do you think spends the most on fireworks okay now it's not just the state 
buying them. It's the people that live in the state too. So where do you, what states spend the most money on fireworks? Well, the top of the list, you'll never guess. Missouri. Missouri, this is in 2019, I think. The U.S. imported, so that means coming in. The U.S. imported $319 million worth of fireworks in 2019. Okay. Missouri, Missourians spent $51 million. Alabama people, $28 million. Kansas, $16 million. California and Texas, $17 million. Mississippi, $42 million. Uh, Wyoming, $2 million. Ohio, $30 million. New York, $2 million. Yeah, I was surprised at that number for New York. Uh, Illinois, $3 million. Michigan, $7 million. Florida, I said that one, $16 million. Pennsylvania, $15 million. Tennessee, $8 million. Washington, 10 million. South Carolina, 18 million. That's in 2019. Okay. So, the number one selling firework sold in the United States is an Excalibur fireworks artillery shell. Okay. So, it's not, it's a firework shell. It's not really an artillery, but because the amount of gunpowder that's in it, that's why they call it that. They are known for their 60 gram charge, vibrant colors, huge and thunderous breaks, and overall quality. Okay. So, what do you think are the 10 best store-bought fireworks? Okay, I'm going to tell you. From number 10 on the list down to number one. Number 10, it's sparklers. Okay. Number nine, TNT poppers. Number eight, artillery shell fireworks. Number seven, Roman candles number six parachutes you know the ones that go off and they explode and a parachute goes floating down number five 16 shot cakes so it's a cake of fireworks round cake of fireworks about yay big with 16 separate fireworks and it has one fuse and it sets them all off Bees, those are fireworks that spin and fly around and bounce, which some states, I think those are outlawed. Um, bottle rockets is number three. Okay. Number two is M80s. And you'll never guess what number one is. <laughs> it cracked me up when I saw it. Number one is fireworks snakes <laughs> so those are the top fireworks and the short history of fireworks the history of fireworks now some people there are some people that disagree some of the historians disagree they think it was fireworks came from hindu background so there you know there is some discussion there some people agree, some don't. Oh, that sounds terrible, Lou. Indiana Tones, did you guys see that? Wow. Let me scroll through. Sherry Ward, welcome. Marty is nuts about digging. Welcome back. Ron F., welcome back. Bill, 457, welcome back. Johnny, hi. Uh, let's see if I missed anybody else. LNW Show. Welcome back. Country Diggers. 
Welcome back. Finding Alabama. Jeremy, thank you for coming. Paul, American Woodland Relics. I think I said hi already. I'm scrolling back trying to, I don't, you know, if I've missed you, please don't take offense. It's, it's not intentional. So. <clears throat> All right. So I got some mail today. And Country Diggers is in my chat. The first one I think is from Country Diggers. Jamie. Deej, this is Jamie from Country Diggers. I hope you enjoyed the drinking glasses. I hope I sanded them good enough for you. If not, you could use a straw in them. Wish you the best in your pursuits and hope you find lots of historical treasures. That's my attempt at a smiley face. Not very good at drawing. Please forgive. Here's the note that Jamie wrote. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie does bottle digging. She finds some cool stuff in the dump. Oh, she wrapped these really, really good. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's made from a beer bottle. Yeah, they feel smooth to me. They don't feel sharp at all. That's cool. There's one. She sent me two of them. They're very well wrapped, too. And this one is a natural light one that she made. Yep. And they're not sharp at the top at all. Very cool. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you for the gift. Let's see. I've got to figure out where I'm going to put these. Hmm. Where they won't break. Put them up here. I don't know if you, can you see them up there? Maybe I better put them on the other side so you can see them. There they are, Jamie. They're up on my shelf. So thank you very much. Hi, Liz. Digging Canuck. Digging Canuck in my house. Very cool. So there is that. Okay, now I got another one. Oh. This is from, this is from Canada. Whoa. Whoa. Holy smokes. Wow. She sent me some Canadian coins. Whoa, there's more. Holy smoke. And some tokens. And something else. Look at these. Look at these tokens here. Very cool. Hi, Adich. I hope all is well. Thank you for making awesome channel content. Johnny and I both enjoy watching. Thanks also for keeping our metal detecting community together and well informed. Enclosed are some tokens for your giveaways as well as a small bookmark paperclip that you may keep or use it for giveaways too. I'm also sending some Canadian coins to add to your collection. The yellow, blue, and green ones are part of a series which are sought after by many a coin collector. Oh, that one's got green or blue on it. Yellow. Oh, wow. Okay. Um... And the 
Armistice Quarter and the Veterans Quarter are always nice to remember those who fought for our freedom, in which we will always be thankful. I am really behind in my editing and videos. Life sure has been keeping me crazy busy. I hope to do a mail call video soon as well as 1500 U-Boat giveaway. Also, my container gardening is coming along. Sigh. Now I just need to find the time to get organized. <laughs> Take care. Love, Chrissy. Kisses and hugs. Outdoorsy Gallo. Very nice, Chrissy. Thank you so much. The Sunshine Self Serve from Aurilla, Ontario. Another truck. Maybe, maybe these are all the same. Yeah. Let me show. I can show you one underneath the coin cam. All right. We got to turn on the light to the coin cam. And let me change cameras. Camera mic, that one. Okay. It says car wash token. And then on the other side, it says sunshine self service. Orilla, Ontario. And she sent me four of these. Thank you very much, Chrissy and Johnny. I love them. Okay. So she sent me four of these. I'll keep one and I will give the other three away. Then she sent me a majestic orca quarter. can get it why it doesn't want to fit in there I uh, have to do it upside down maybe it doesn't want to fit underneath this picture well doggone it they're in a holder and hmm let me see what do I have that I can raise that up Got to be something I can raise this up with. Oh, I know. <coughs> See if that helps. There we go. There we go. That's the first coin, Majestic Orca. <clears throat> and the next one she sent is the Peregrine Falcon. Peregrine Falcon. Hmm, it's not focusing very good, is it? There we go. There's the Peregrine Falcon. This was the Orca. Maybe it'll show up better now. The Orca. These almost look like they're Aboriginal art. Liz can probably tell us. Um, rare Wood Bison Quarter. quarter. Very cool. Then the Armistice Quarter. And then, finally, the Year of the Veteran Quarter. Very nice. These are beautiful coins, Chrissy. Thank you so much. Let's see. Go back to the other camera. There we go. Hi, Lincoln. Thank you for coming to my live stream. We're sending you prayers, Lincoln. Hang in there, bud. Let me scroll back. Make sure I haven't missed anybody. S Cynthia, I think I said hi to you, but just in case I didn't, Cynthia Swearingen, hi. Hmm. 
And I said hi to Lou. There's 25 in my chat. Thank you very much, folks. I think I said hi to Ron F. already and Sherry Ward. I think I'm caught up. Okay, let's scroll that down. All right. So, we are going to put these other three tokens in the token jar so that they're available to be chosen. Maybe tonight. Who knows? Two. And number three. All three are in the token jar. Hi, Archaeology. Mikey007. Welcome back. And we're going to mix them up. Okay, we got that set. This down. Okay. Then I got... I'm not sure who this is from. Hmm. Something from Florida. It might be a sticker trade maybe or something. Yeah, that's what I think it is. Oh, wow. Is there a note? Hmm. Jason from Jacksonville, Florida. Sandman coins and collectibles. Very cool stickers. Thank you, Jason. Look at that. He sent me... Believe in Greatness Champion Attitude Token. It's a wooden token. Look at that. I got a couple wooden nickels. It says Big Cat on the back. Very cool. Thank you very much. Um, I want to keep your address so that I can send you my stickers back. So we'll put you right there. Then I was on Flash in Your Pants live stream last week. They had the man who came up with the bear claw gold pants <laughs> on. And I won the giant bear claw gold pan. Let's see if I can get it open. Oh boy, I should have. I don't know if I. Yeah, I got scissors here. I won this bear claw gold pan, which I want to try at my son's. My son has property on a private lake, my youngest, that used to be a gravel pit. Okay, Let's see if I can get it out of this bag. There we go. gold claw and it tells you how to use your gold claw which I saw because um, Toledo Jess and Dano were showing how to use both types of pans so I already saw how to use it but they were offering on a Ed's live stream, they were offering a deal for pay dirt, a snuffer bottle, a collection bottle, and the mini, the pocket, the pocket bear claw. Is it bear claw or gold claw? The pocket gold claw. Sorry. For $20, $19.95, something like that. So I ordered that. Well, then I ended up winning this giant one. And it's a swirl one where, let's see if I can pull it out of this. See if you can see, it's, it's clear and blue. So when they start, when they run out of a color and then they start adding the new color in, it, it, it'll do a swirl to it. Some people like just solid colors. Some people like swirl colors. I'm not picky. I like it. 
but this will pan down a lot of concentrates quickly. So I'm excited to try this at my son's property. So, so let me see. I flat Ed, is that deal still on with uh with gold claw for the pocket claw? Hi, Nick Molnar. Hi, Robert and Melissa. Clark's Cove detecting BC treasure trails. Welcome back. Let's see if I missed anybody else. Joe Copperheads. Welcome back, Joe. So, and I got a big package that I can't get downstairs. I received my package from Technetics. And I'll show you guys that next week. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, I am now sponsored by Technetics Metal Detectors, which is um, one of the companies run by First Texas, First Texas Products. And that um, I became sponsored last week. I think I signed my contracts. So exciting times, folks. <laughs> uh, yesterday I had my collaboration hunt with, and I'm wearing, I'm going to try to wear a different shirt that's been sent to me or given to me as a gift from all the different channels that had given me these shirts. So today I am wearing straight up metal detecting shirt. And I had a collaboration hunt with Tripwire yesterday at an old park and we had a great time. He was a blast. We had, it was just a blast. I had never laughed so much in my life. So what time is it? 6.12. Yes, they sent me the Technetics G2 Plus. G as in goat, but not, that's not what it means, but G2 Plus. Hi, David Carlisle. Long time no see, bud. How are you doing? I loved your fireworks show. So, um, Let's see, my last video that I put up, I think, was the fireworks show at the lake. Um, this is a tradition that got started by my boy's late father. And uh, my youngest son was always the one that did it since then, since he passed away. And now that my oldest son is back in Michigan from Kentucky, they both, together with all their friends and a firefighter, was also present, set off the fireworks this year. So it was good to be with family again. It really was. This last year and a half has been so hard on everybody. So if you haven't had a chance to see my fireworks this year, last year, I put when I put them up, I was in a field away from everybody else because I was afraid of catching the virus because I'm a breast cancer survivor. This year, I was able to sit with everybody. You know, I've, I've had the vaccinations. I'm good. And last year, I used symphony music background. This year, I used country music background. I don't know what I'll use next year. We'll see. Hi, Shane, Ohio River History. Wow, 26 in my chat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Squirrels magnet fishing. Thank you. I think I'm caught up with everybody. If I haven't noticed you in the chat, please don't be offended. It's not intentional by any means. So, um... Nancy wasn't sure if she would get home in time, so I sent the answers. Mark Branton, welcome back. Mark, we need to do a collaboration hunt, dude. 
size detecting wow hi cyrus we need to do a collab too <laughs> so let's see i sent the questions and answers to mark thomas and then, oh but before i do that let me find my notes i have some thank yous to put out there last tuesday for my uh announcement video and what the future holds nugget shooterette i want to thank these people for their super chats nugget shooterette was the first to give me a super chat cynthia swearingen thank you very much nugget shooterette and cynthia tammy and cynthia cynthia ed flash in your pan as well and thor from thor's treasures Thank you guys for your super chats. I really appreciate it. And now we can do the uh, giveaways. Let's see. One of these has got it. There it is. Okay. So get your typing fingers ready, people. Because I'm, I don't know. I very rarely do states. You know, so you never know what question I'm going to ask, but these are fireworks related questions. All right. So. Get your typing fingers ready and do not put your answer in the chat until after I put go in the chat. Okay. Also, once you win, you can only win once a night. So don't even guess for the next giveaway. You know what I'm saying? So if you win the first token, then you should not be guessing in the answers for the second token or third. So we, we need to spread the wealth, give everybody a chance to win, okay? So here's the first question. Which country imports, brings in the most fireworks? Which country in the world imports in the most fireworks? Go. I think I see it. Is Mark still in the chat? Oh, Mark says stop. Mark Thomas says stop. Give him a chance to go back and look in the chat. And he'll tell us who won. And the answer. <laughs> David Carlisle, Taco. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by that, David. It, that's not a country. Mark the Berg Hunter. Whoa. Congratulations. Mark and Piper. Congratulations. Okay. Let's draw your token. And for those of you that are new to my live streams, Every time I have a live stream that I don't have a guest, I give away three tokens. Now, this is an ironstone crack filled with, when it started out, 11 pounds of tokens. So, whoop, I'm going to turn it this way. It's got, it's heavy. This itself is not real old, but it is collectible. But I thought, what a, what a good thing to put all of them in that's strong enough to hold it. So, and I will send the token anywhere in the world, okay? Okay, what do we got? That's interesting, okay. Let's move those out of the way. So, 
switch cameras no I think it's that camera nope now I'm gonna have to adjust it again oh no maybe you can see the mine shaft eat drink and play uh, let me look. I can't read that. Warward, Wisconsin. So I think this is a token for an amusement park. Very possibly. And then the other side says no cash value, I think. No cash value. And this token has been used. So it's not pristine. So, there you go, Mark. The Berg Hunter and Piper, that's the token you won. Congratulations. Okay, let's switch back. All right. So, we're going to put that one there. And then we're going to do the next question. All right. Let's see. All right, next question. Which state boasts they are the home of the fireworks capital capital of America? What state? Claims they are the fireworks capital of America. Get ready. Get set. Go. Oh, wow. I think I see it, Mark. Mark said, stop, everybody. Give Mark a chance to go back and verify who it was that won it. Ontario isn't a state. Well, it is in Canada, but a state in the U.S. <laughs> stop, everybody. Yep, no initials. You got to spell the state out. <laughs> Bill. Bill says Calcutta. <laughs> David, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Are you hungry or what? <laughs> Mark Thomas says, Archaeology Mikey 007 won it with Pennsylvania. Woohoo, Mikey. Okay. Grab a token. Oh, it's a two tone token. It's like two different kinds of metal. See that? Very cool. Okay, let's see what Mikey won. Switch cameras. Okay, it is a car wash token, satisfaction guaranteed, it says wash me on it, it has a phone number at the bottom, okay, and then you flip it over, it says the same thing, satisfaction guaranteed, wash me car wash, very cool, there you go Mikey, congratulations. Switch cameras back. All right. We'll put that one there. That's number two. Okay. Then my third question. 
Get ready. <laughs> Brian B. Higgle says, I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> I know a song like that. Okay. Here we go. Number Question number three. Which country in Europe first manufactured fireworks? We'll see how good your memory is. Get ready, get set, go. David Carlisle. <laughs> you have tacos on the brain, David. Which country in Europe was the first to manufacture fireworks in Europe? <laughs> Mark the Bird Hunter says spam. Oh, now we're all about food again. <laughs> Chili Chase Burger is what Ed Flash in Your Pants says. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. It's in Europe. It's a country in Europe. <laughs> Ed goes, darn blonde fingers. <laughs> Oh, Mark Thomas said stop. He must have saw it somewhere. Mark the, Mark the Berg Hunter says New Jersey. That's not a country in Europe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Howdenshire. Okay, that's a new one on me. <laughs> LNW show. American Woodland Relics again? My goodness, Paul, you are a lucky dude. You are a lucky dude. Okay, let's draw your token, Paul. See if we can get you another, a different one yet. We'll see. I don't know if you have this one or not, but it's a car wash token. Let's switch cameras and look at it. There's a lot of car wash tokens in that jar. Car wash, bowling, bank. Car wash token. Got a Model T on one side. And on this side, it says car wash token, no cash value, non-refundable. <coughs> so I'm not sure if you have that one already or not. You won several times. But congratulations, Paul and Belinda. Let me switch the camera back. Okay, now, um, Bill, Outdoorsy Gallo, Chrissy, did you guys see me open your package? Thank you for the coins. That was very kind of you. Thank you very much. I put three of the four matching tokens in the token jar to give away. I'm keeping one for me, <laughs> for my collection. So, Ed, can you put a link to your live stream at 8, 8 o'clock and who your guest is for me, please? And then, uh, Papa Roos, what's in the dirt? Can you put a link to your live stream tonight, what time and everything? Yes, thank you, Sherry Ward. If you guys could hit the like button, it, it would help my channel very much. It 
So next week, um, let's see. So this Friday will be my, my premiere video will be my collaboration hunt with Oakland Digger. Okay. Um, I ha haven't decided yet what the topic is going to be next Tuesday for next Tuesday's live stream, but I will open the mail from First Texas products. So you will see the box with the detector. You know, I won't, I won't open the bo individual boxes themselves or the detector box. I'll do a, a uh, assembly video for that separate. Magnetic squatches. Ed, flash in your pants guest tonight. Woohoo. Very cool. Hi, Kay. Kay's digging it. Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. And if anybody that sends me a shirt, I will wear it on my live streams. I will take turns with everybody's shirts. Okay. So because I had the hunt yesterday with straight up metal detecting, I am wearing his shirt. Hi, Bradley Height. Welcome. See if I missed anybody in the chat. Is Bill still in the chat, Papa Roos? Um, Mark Thomas, can you see? Can you go to his channel, channel Papa Roos, What's in the Dirt? Can you give me a link for that? Oh, there's Bill. It's at 7.30 Central Time. <coughs> his browser won't let him do a link. Oh, it's because it's got to be done by a moderator, I think. That's why. Um, and Ed is a moderator, so he was able to do that. Oh, is it really? Is it buffering, Chrissy? Oh. Whoops. <laughs> okay, Ed. Um, if Sherry Ward or Flash in Your Pan or one of my mods could put the link to Papa Roos, What's in the Dirt. He's doing a super clean giveaway tonight. So those people approach me too in an email, but because I'm so careful with emails, I, did, I didn't get involved in it. I figured there's enough of you out there that would probably enjoy doing a review of the product. I'll let you guys do it. So, <laughs> but they did approach me. I just, I've got so many other things on my plate between my dog's health and everything else. Texas Plug Riches. Char, how are you? So, did anybody, was anybody able to get out digging last week in that heat? Thank you, Mark, for doing that. I appreciate that. Yep, and if you get a chance, check out the people that have GoFundMe's. If you're able to help, that would be great. If you can't, if you, it's just, just sending them a kind card, like um, oldies and goodies, send them a card. Um, we don't know what happened with Al's GoFundMe because for some reason, GoFundMe sent everybody that made a donation, they sent it back to them, and we still don't know why. But um, Al is not able to go into his PayPal account right now because he's not at his computer, and he can't remember his password. It's on his computer. <laughs> so we're going to hold off. Redonating everything, you know, 
until he gets close to being sent home. So, but he's improving every week is what I'm assuming. I haven't heard any different. But um, I think, Mark Thomas, if you still have the links from before for, what were the people that I mentioned? Um, there's Uncle Al. Um, I think I sent Mark Thomas a few weeks ago. I sent you the link for if you want to send Uncle Al a card to the rehabilitation center he's at. I don't know if Mark st still has that address that I sent him or not. Um, let's see who else. Mobile Coins. Larry of Mobile Coins lost two legs. And I think he's trying to raise money to get home is what I was told by somebody. So there's another one. If you can't afford to donate, it's okay. Just, you know, watch one of their old videos, even if you've already seen it. And leave them a kind comment to let them know you're thinking of them. Okay? Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if anybody else has a GoFundMe. Uh, SusieQ96. She has a GoFundMe that's still active. Um, I think that's it for the GoFundMes, unless Mark Thomas can think of anybody else. But thank you, everybody. I appreciate you coming to my live stream tonight. I appreciate the support. Thank you for all the gifts. I mean, oh, before I forget, I just thought of something. Oh, no. Ah, oh, I just broke my Riker box. Oh, no. Remember, I got this coin or medallion. It's like a challenge token. From Tango Tango of Monk Cheetah in Tango Tango. Okay. And there's the other side. Remember, I said I thought I had a little easel I could put it on. I found it. So there it is. Uh oh. There it is. So I'm going to put it up here. So you'll be able to see. It's up there on that shelf right there. So. But thank you very much. And get out there. Be safe. Make sure you take plenty of water and hydrate when you're out in this heat, when you're out detecting or bottle digging, you know, any kind of treasure hunting. <coughs> <coughs> if you're out in the water, if you are in water deeper than your knees, please wear a personal flotation device. They make them super lightweight. It's like it's, it, they, they don't restrain you from doing anything. There have been so many people that have drowned over the last few weeks across the United States. And many of them were excellent swimmers and they still drowned. <coughs> so be safe out there. Thank you so much to my mods for helping me. I appreciate everybody. I I appreciate everybody that came and supported me. And I will see you Friday. My premiere video will be at 6 o'clock Friday. Um, Oakland Digger has a channel, but I don't think he's put anything on it recently. Um, but he shows his finds on Instagram. <coughs> and that. So everybody, be safe out there. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.